So the first thing that I think about when I'm starting a painting like this, nighttime, a lot of dark colors, but then we have the brilliant and bright northern lights, is how am I gonna get started? And I'm sure that's a question that a lot of you have. This is just, it's a difficult painting. Let's just leave it at that. So um, I'm gonna show you how to get started. And I think what the first thing that I'm gonna do is block in this entire painting, um, but in a really simple way. So I'm gonna show you what I mean here. The colors that we have are phthalo blue, naphthol crimson, and then over here, the other red, I have quinacridone because we might want to add some or include some violet and quinacridone is really good for creating violet. Red can sometimes muddy it or darken it down. And then I also have titanium white, permanent green hue, I think it's called, and then cad yellow light. And these are all Liquitex soft body paints. I think my green was a golden fluid acrylic just because that's the only, yeah, it's the only one I have. So this is golden. And of course, we're not using any black because so many of you have asked me to do so. So first things first, let's start with the sky. And I'm just kind of going back and forth looking and I've got some water on my brush. I'm using a one inch flat brush and I'm just kind of looking at the sky, how I'm going to do this. So first things first, let's start with the lightest part of the Northern Lights. And of course we want to cover everything on the canvas. So I'm just going to grab some white and we're going to go right through the area of the Northern Lights. I'm just going to add some white paint. I sprayed this with a fixative, but some of it's sort of blending into the whites. The white is actually probably looking a little bit gray. And that's the reason I like to spray my drawing with a fixative prior to this, but it didn't seem to do quite as good of a job as I wanted to. So it's kind of blending into the paint, but that's fine. So I've got some white next things first. Next thing is uh, we want to have some, some green probably going to add some yellow because of course, as we get further out into the Northern lights, we're going to have some color into this. Now, like I said, this is going to be a very simple way to do this. So I'm not worried about any specifics other than I just want the, the most prominent color in that area to be present when I'm, when I'm done with this initial stage here. So of course we've got greens through here. I just want these areas, to be covered in that color. So not worried about anything else, just get it on there. Okay, now as we get further back to the left, I want these colors To be more rich, probably start changing into the blue spectrum. So I'm grabbing some just, this is just solid permanent green. So now we've got sort of a transition going. I'm going to continue with that. I want a little more green further down this direction. So I'll just kind of add it. So the paint is not very thick at this point. I don't want, I just want to cover the canvas. I don't want to get a lot of sloppy paint on there and create a bunch of lines. We just want, this is just the underpainting. So we just want it to be present. Okay, next thing, I'm going to wash my brush for this. Next thing we want to do is, I'm going to go ahead and use this quinacridone. So I'm going to grab some white and look at that nice, brilliant pink that I get out of that. Now, of course, with that, I want to add some of the blue. Nice violet now. This is where, where it gets tricky. And you shouldn't over, 
you shouldn't overdo this part or think about it too much. Just it's going to look a little bit muddy as you mix it into the green, but it's a lot closer than what it was when we started with a blank canvas. So just don't worry about it. Get it on there. It's going to be a tough. It's going to be a tough thing to swallow when it looks kind of ugly. And you're going to have to leave it and let it dry, but we're going to do it anyways. So just follow me on that. So pretty simple, easy process. Just get some color on there. We'll worry about the transitions later. Okay, good enough for now. We've got to start. Next thing I'm going to do is wash my brush yet again. I'm going to pick up some blue. Now I'm thinking about the color of the sky itself. We get a lot of blue. I also want to have some quinacridone mixed into that. So I want to have a little bit of a violet tone. And I'm also going to add some green to this. A little bit of yellow. And so what we're doing is darkening this color. It's going to get very dark, but it's also very rich. So we're just adding the primary colors together, essentially. But it's probably got more of a violet tone. That quinacridone can be pretty strong. Now this isn't going to cover extremely well with the first layer, but it is going to get us again closer to where we want where we want to go with it. So it's going to be a nice deep color. But now again, do not worry about the transition. Let's focus on that later. Let's just make sure that we have the color we want on the canvas. So let's get some more of this color, quinacridone, then some green and yellow. the entire top of the painting to be dark. So we're going to go ahead and color. Okay. All right, so that's a good start for up top there. Now I'm going underneath. And so underneath here, is the portion between the northern lights and the horizon. So we want a little bit of that dark color to, to show through here. Okay, so now I'm gonna wash my brush. We have that color in place. Next thing is let's move on to the foreground and get the rest of the painting blocked in here. And the first thing that I'm going to do to the foreground is we have some water, a creek maybe, flowing through. So I'm just going to get some green tone. I'm going to go right through the area. This doesn't have to be perfect right off the bat, but I just want to have this green tone down so I know where the water is going to be. We want some of that reflection of the northern lights in the water. So I'm just kind of washing them to that color on there. Next thing, after I wash my brush, is we're going to go with the blue again. We're going to start to think about the color of 
the snow. So we got the blue, and I'm going to add some white to it. A little more white. Okay. I'm going to pick up some of the naphthol, also some of the yellow. Take some white, red and yellow, maybe a little bit of green. Okay, so we've basically neutralized some of this blue. I'm just going to test it, see what kind of tone we have here, right below the sky. Go ahead and fill this part in, just take a look. It's going to be the horizon coming down. I think we can probably get away with some more white, maybe even some red. Yeah, it'll probably look good. Well, let's just go ahead and fill in probably just some more white. Let's just stick with this for right now. Again, this is just blocking in, so nothing has to be permanent. This is just gives us a good idea. Gosh, I think we could probably add more white to this. Let's go ahead and mix some more of this color. Probably just use the rest of the blue. And of course, I'll grab some quinacridone. That's probably fine too. And then grab my primary colors. Mix that in. A little more green and yellow and red. A little more red. Okay, now you have to you have to think about the the actual design of this foreground. So I'm thinking about what the shoreline along this bit of water is actually going to look like. It doesn't have to be perfect quite yet, but I'd like to get it fairly close. So I'm just kind of slowing down as I get in this particular area. Oh, this is going to be a fun painting. When I can envision it, and that's what I'm doing right now, I can kind of see the finished result. I get excited. And I know this one's going to be good. So at first, a lot of this, grab a little more white, a lot of this looks pretty undefined, washed together. It's hard to tell the difference between the sky and the horizon right now. But we, we want it to be fairly close. And again, we just want this underpainting, is what essentially this is, to be probably a little bit darker than the finished results. I like to paint highlights over the top of maybe a darker underpainting. It's usually how I like to work. Just want to try to make the rest of this paint work and fill in this portion over here.
Okay, almost done. Almost time to just take a break, step back, let all of this dry. Think about the next move, the next step. Last thing I want to do real quick here, take some of this blue over here, add some I need more blue. You know what, let's just go ahead and take some blue and, ah, no, let's just keep this going. Red, blue, maybe yellow, a little more red. We're gonna have some trees through here. So let's just indicate where that's going to be. Eh, it's kind of mixing into the paint, that's fine. Be a nice soft indication of what, what's going to happen through here. Uh, I'm just going to go ahead and leave this for right now. This is a good undercoat, a blocked in painting, and then once this dries, we'll go to the next step and we'll start to refine things, probably start with the sky. All right, this is good and dry, so let's move on to refining the sky. And I'm going to start with these northern lights. We basically want to just create some nice smooth transitions between the darks and the lights. And uh, just kind of, uh, we'll just see what happens with down below here. But we want to just start bringing this in and just tying it all in together. So I think what I'm going to do first is look for a, an in-between color. So something in between the dark blues and the greens. We also want to include some of uh, this magenta color, the violet, so we'll probably start somewhere in between. So let's start with taking some blue along with some green and add some white to it. Get some water. Okay. So what I'm going to do is start to go in these transition areas. I'm just using the pattern of the brush, the brush strokes, to kind of create some lines for me. Of course, we know northern lights usually have some lines, some different variations. so. I'm going to go ahead, just let the brush work. So this is going to take several steps. You're not going to get everything to look perfect all at once. But we're just trying to take all of this one step at a time. And with each step, we just try to make it a little bit closer to the finished result. Okay, just add a couple lines through here. I might even want to change the angle. Maybe angle's a little bit too steep. Maybe slightly higher. We can play with that. But let's take some more of this blue, probably just use the same color, and let's add some quinacridone to it. Little bit of white, we don't need a lot because we don't want to brighten it too much. Quinacridone and blue. Okay, so we got some violet color, pretty dark though. Probably get away with a little more white and red. Okay, now I can kind of use this color to blend into the greens, and that's going to darken it. 
And so we can darken some areas automatically by taking some of this color and just mixing it right in with what we just did. We want some of this violet to show up throughout as well. So don't be too picky with it. Ah, it's already looking a lot better. So I think what I'm going to do, I'm going to wash my brush. There's going to be a time when we need to change the size of the brush. So what I'm going to do is I also don't want all of this to be bright across. I want to have a focus, and that focus is probably going to be right here where it's going to be a little bit brighter. This will probably be less bright, and then this will be even, uh, even more dull. So let's take some steps to get it there. Take some green. That's a really powerful green. Let's add some blue to that with some white. Okay, this will probably be good. Ah, a little more blue. Perfect. I'm going to go ahead and cover this area with this color. So before you really get obsessed with small details, let's make sure the big picture is where we want it to be. And that's making sure that the overall contrast and the colors are as close as they can be to the finished painting. So we want to work on that. Just adding this color to the bottom edge and that just kind of helps blend that bottom edge, edge into the background as well. Add a little bit of white to this. Okay. It's not bad. I'm going to add some more white now, along with some yellow. Okay, that's looking pretty good. Now I can probably add some more yellow to this. This is gonna just make a little more vibrant green. And I'm gonna blend some of that into this violet, which should be mostly dry at this point. So you can see what we're doing. All of a sudden, these things start to work together. All these little colors. We can start to see and visualize what these Northern Lights are actually gonna look like. Okay, it's really hard sometimes to know when to let everything dry, but I like to push it as well, so I'm just kind of keep working, but you could probably take a break and let it dry if you're really struggling at this point as well. That's never a bad thing. So that's looking good. Overall, I like what, what's happening with it. Wash my brush again. And I'm going to darken some of the sky even more so. I'm going to take, just got the blue right here. I'm going to add the red to it with a little bit of yellow. So that's going to be really dark. Try to fan out the bottom a little bit. Just start that, that blending process. Need some more blue. Blue, red, a little bit of yellow. Nice and rich and dark. We want those northern lights to pop. So the more depth we can draw out of this background area in the sky, 
the brighter the northern lights are going to appear. Glazing can kind of help that too. Okay, so now that's really looking dark. I'm going to let everything dry because we've gone over everything with paint. This is a good time to just step back, let it dry so that our next step will go on nice and cleanly. All right, so this was good to step back and just think about it. Uh, I have a real clear idea of what I want to do now. And what that's going to be is to even further blend this transition zone between the greens and this really dark, rich blue here. So we just want to continue to darken the top portion of these greens and just pulling it down. And then also really define some of these lines where we want to be able to see through these lights. So I'm probably going to switch brushes at some point here. Uh, I've got some clean water now though, and I've still got this flat brush. And I'm just thinking if I want to switch yet, I may, I'm going to go ahead and take out a, this is a, Scrumbler brush number 10 by Artist Loft. Princeton makes these round blenders. I know I always say this, but I continue to get a lot of questions. So just a nice round brush. And I'm going to, I'm gonna grab some blue and some green. So I left most of the blue there. So I'm gonna take it slow. A little more, a little more blue, a little more. Okay, probably about somewhere right in there. Grab some water. Thin that down slightly. Now, okay, so I think I want more blue. It never looks the same when you put it down. And I grab some white, if you'd notice that. Okay, so that's better. So that's a darker color than what the green is already on there. This will help me just further that transition. So I'm still using the, the larger brush. Start looking at those gaps that I talked about. So what gets really tricky about these northern lights, and now if you, if you stand back and you kind of take a look at this, it's really looking nice. Um, even though it's not perfectly smooth, it's looking a lot more like northern lights, just little by little, and it's starting to become very brilliant now. But the, the struggle, the hard, one of the hardest parts is how do you get the different colors like the violets and the greens and the blues to all work together without muddying up together without blending into each other and turning into just kind of a flat, dull look. Well, the way that I do that with acrylics, and that's what's so difficult about acrylics, and a lot of people don't get this, is I, in, in order for me to sort of overcome that, and maybe I could call it how to hack that, with acrylic paints is that I go in layers. So I let this dry. You can't do it all at once because you will end up blending these colors together. So you have to do the blues, let the blues dry. Then once that dries and you want a little bit of violet tone, you'll go back over with some violet and you'll buff some violet over the top of that. And you kind of keep going back and forth until they're not muddy. And it, it won't turn muddy because we're working wet on dry. So that's one of the advantages of working wet on dry with acrylics is that you can layer colors that normally if you did, normally if you mix those colors together, they would get muddy, but with the use of layer, you're allowed to layer those colors and cheat a little bit and it doesn't turn muddy. It actually can sometimes turn more brilliant because we're glazing these colors as well. So that looks pretty good. I like where that's going. There's going to be areas that I want to refine, such as this portion right here. We've got some of this dark color. We want that dark color to flow down into some of these areas because this is an area where we can see through the northern light, so it should be darker up here. And it's kind of the same tone as over here. So we want to start to divide that. So we can just take some more of the blue. I'm going to add 
some red, some water. I'm going to add some red into that. Don't want a lot on there. This is where I probably should start getting into my smaller brush. So it's going to get more challenging with large brush. I'm going to take some yellow. So you can see what that starts to do. Starts to just separate all of that out, which will be good, but it's still going to take a tremendous amount of work to keep it, uh, blending, continue to blend this together, and to get it exactly how we want. Also going to create another, we're going to keep on this color. We want to really make sure that this is as close as possible before we start to blend. And so some of this is going to have to be brought down even more. So I'm just going ahead and taking some of this blue. I'm glazing it essentially now over the top of some of this green. Just pulling it down, darkening it in some areas even more so. Like I said, I wanted the top of this painting to be really dark, so continuing to do that. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and get all the way across. on the greens here. And I'm just going to test this out. Just want to fade that top portion over here, just like I did back to the left. So I'm just going to try to find that. It's a slightly different color over here. And I'm going to go ahead and just add this green right above it, right above the highlight here. And then I'm going to take some darker blue and I'll probably add some red to that. And that will start the transition as we work closer to those darks. And just using the flat side of the brush, really fan some of that out. And I'm going to grab some more blue and red. We basically just want to keep darkening this as we fade it into the sky. And again, none of this has to be perfect, but it's good to get it close. Okay. So that's not bad. We've got a good start there. But what we want to start doing is breaking up some of these, these lighter areas like I talked about. And so we did that a couple times here, but we want to maybe even go a step further and start working on some of the highlights as well and streak some of those. So I'm going to grab the smaller round brush that I talked about here. I'm going to pick up some white and some yellow. Just got a light greenish, yellowish color here. Uh, it's going to be too bright. Pick up just some more blue. Okay, maybe that'll work. Ah, still too dark now. So you really have to go back and forth. A lot of guesswork. I just don't like that tone. I'll go ahead and wash my brush. Start over again. Some green and white. A little bit of yellow. Probably didn't need the blue in there. I could take a rag, add a little water, and this portion is dry now except for what I just laid on. So I can just kind of wipe some of that off, get most of it off anyways. There we go. So that's about the right color. In this next portion, this next part of the process of the painting will be just small refinements, just like this. Not going to be overly worried about the horizon yet. Probably paint over some of it. Yeah, 
add some of this color right on top of these highlights. Just start to feather the highlight off a little bit towards those darks. Now, if you've watched some of my Northern Lights videos in the past, I like to blend with my finger a lot when I'm doing soft areas. But more and more, I like, I, I'm like i tending to try to use the brush as much as I can in the beginning, but I will probably end up using my finger here shortly. I'm just trying to set it up so that everything is pretty close to being in place. I'm just gonna think about this real quick before I make any big adjustments, but I'm gonna to start to streak some of these colors a little bit higher up. Just like that. And I'm gonna kind of step back every once in a while, just try to make sure that they're all close to the same direction. We don't want any of those lines to be slanted. Okay, now I can start taking that color. It's a little bit darker. I can pull it down through some of these highlights and start to break that up, add some of these streaks throughout. Okay, it's looking pretty good. I'm gonna grab some blue and red. Start thinking about maybe some areas that a little more divided. Right through here. And kind of break that up a little more, add some darker. And I might just take some of this dark and just reshape some of this. And just start to break this up. Perfect. It's hard to envision right away, but now you can see there's going to be maybe a little bit of a wave going. So I'm starting to bring up this portion here and then kind of divide it. Probably do the same right here. So again, it's going to be a little rough to begin with, but I just tend to ignore that and just continue on anyways. It'll get better and better. Really haven't invested a whole lot of time in this yet. So having that patience of letting this, this process work out in the, in the long run is a real advantage and, and it just doesn't take a lot of time to get here. So don't try to rush it. Okay, so that's looking better. I'm going to take some more water on my brush, grab some more of that blue. And just look for those same areas up top a little bit. So again, think about when you're doing something like this, that takes a lot of blending, which can get very frustrating. Think about the big picture. Think about the macro. Don't think about each individual blend or brush stroke. Just try to make sure that you like everything overall. When you really stand back and take a step back and look at it, you just want the composition to be right. You want the colors to be right. All those other details can be worked out. And I can already tell at this point that I'm going to be using some oil paint to finish this painting. And I'm pretty certain on that, especially for the Northern Lights. So I'm not too worried about it now. I'm just making sure that everything is as close as I can get it. Okay, so I'm gonna grab some more 
red and blue, and just continue. Get some moisture, some water in there. Dip my fingers in some water. Eh, let's start to get a little more serious with the blending now. Get some water, kind of blend that out. So by glazing some of this color, and that's really what is happening here, it's going to just increase the depth, the vibrancy, the colors are going to start to pop more. I'm going to wash the brush. I'm going to take some yellow, kind of add it to this mixture up here. start to add some yellow to these colors down low here some of these highlights a little bit of yellow right there as well so the next thing that I'm going to be doing is adding the violets and the pinks I don't want a lot of white, just some small amount. So I'm just going to try that for right now. It's pretty thin paint. I'm going to go right over the top of some of these areas. And just begin to brush on some of this color. It's going on fairly thin. But definitely noticeable. And so I'm going to continue to work at this. By just scrubbing on these colors, there's absolutely no special technique here other than just going about it very slowly and meticulously, having the patience and, and just understand that it does take many layers. And this is not going to be an absolute perfect blend of colors because this is probably stretching the capabilities of acrylics. But I'm going to continue just to take colors just like this and like I have been doing with this round brush and just scrubbing them over the top. And occasionally you might see me use my fingers. I've covered this numerous times in the past, so I probably have some other videos that might cover something if I missed it. But I'm just going to keep going. It's the same process. And you're going to see things start to smooth out especially some of these greens into the, the, the violets, and then I'll probably smooth out some of this upper portion. And then I'll probably be ready to wrap up the sky at that point. I'll begin adding some stars and I'll slow it down. We'll talk about how I do that.
Okay, so this is really starting to take on a nice, smooth look, and I'm happy with most of it. Now, I don't want to go too far with blending these acrylics because you can begin to waste time. If I switch to oil paints later, uh, I'm actually going to save a lot of time because it would take a lot of effort to get these acrylic paints to be as smooth as I want them to be. So there's a fine line between knowing how far you can take them before you start uh, basically taking more time than needed. So I'm going to leave this as is for now, but I'm starting to wrap up a few things with it still. And one of the things was these pink highlights. Now I used a lighter color with this area just to make sure that they're bright enough, but now I want to glaze some violet, some pink over the top just to darken that down, but to also saturate it more. It's going to add some more depth. So let's go to the palette here and you've seen me switch. I got to find my brush here. You've seen me switch to this round blender brush. So that's what I'm still going to be using here. And I've got quite a bit of water on it. So we're basically glazing with water. And I know I've got a huge mess now, but bear with me. So I'm just going to take some blue and some quinacridone. And then I'm dabbing that off on my napkin over here. Just I want a fair amount on the brush, but I don't want too much. So now I've got some of that violet pink color. And look at that brilliant bright pink go right over the top. Now, as I do this, before I let it dry, I'll take my hand and I'll just kind of fan it out, scrub it out. Now you see how intense that made that look. So I'm gonna pick up a little more water and I'm gonna grab some of this. This is more of a violet tone. So this has got more blue in it. Kind of go around the top edge. Great thing about Northern Lights is they change by the second. So there's no wrong way to go about this, but I want this to be more saturated. Okay, perfect. Now I'm just gonna grab some blue. Ooh, I got some green in there as well. Go ahead and wash my brush. I'm gonna grab some blue. And along the top, I'm gonna add some blue Take my hand, kind of blend it into the pinks there. So now we've got a little variation of color. And some of the canvas texture showing through, and that's quite all right, because again, oils will fix that with no problem. But that's looking pretty good. I'm gonna take a step back and just look. I really like how that one's yeah, I like how that portion's coming together. I'm gonna grab a little more of the quinacridone. I'm gonna add it right through here, just sort of complete this whole area. I don't want any gaps in that color. Okay, so that's pretty good. Now, last thing I'm gonna do before I move on to the foreground is I've got here just a small needle and what I'm going to do is mix a color that I would like for the stars. Now, I get a lot of questions if you've seen me paint stars in, in the past. Why don't I flick a brush with thin down paint? I just like the control over knowing exactly where my stars are going to go. I don't need to put that many on the canvas either to make a nice effect. So I go about this very meticulous. I've got some thin down paint and my needle and the needle has sort of a blunt edge to it. It's I've sanded the, the tip down just so it doesn't poke through the canvas. And I've mixed some blue into this paint. So we've got a little bit of a bluish hue to it as well. I don't want the stars to be too bright. And I'm not going to add tons of stars just yet. I'll probably wait till I get to the oil portion to really finish it up, but I do want the stars to, at least some of them to be present so that I kind of know how this is looking. 
So as I add these stars, what's going to happen is you're going to start to the imperfections you see in the sky, and this is why it's important to lay down stars prior to maybe moving to oil paints and finishing the sky, is that by laying down these stars, we're going to distract ourselves and our eyes will start to forget about any imperfections that we don't like about the northern lights. Or maybe if we didn't blend certain areas as well, we might start to forget about that because we're distracted with all the other details that are going on. So I think it's important to go as far as you can go, at least if you're going to paint oils over the top and you might cover up, you know that you might cover up some of the stars. You can always paint stars over back over the top of that. So um, I don't think you're losing out by adding any stars that you may paint over later. So it's just going to give us a great idea of how much work we need to put into it when we're ready to finish it. So I'll just go around and I'll tap a few more stars and I'm going to leave the stars for just now because I want to show you what I'm going to do. Find the right brush. Probably grab this filbert brush here. So this is a quarter inch wide filbert brush. And I'm going to mix some blue. Basically, we'll, we want to see how this is looking. And the way that I'm going to do that is sharpen up that horizon. So I'm adding some red with the blue, and a little bit of white, maybe even some yellow. Not a lot of yellow though. I'm gonna go back over the top here. That's a lot of, it's more of a violet tone. We could probably use less. Maybe just add some yellow to that. See how this looks. That eh, might be all right for now. It's a good base coat. But what I'm going to do is just clean up that horizon because as we clean that up, we're going to really have a, an idea of where those northern lights are supposed to end. And the bottom of it I left pretty unfinished, so this will just clean that up, get that distraction out of the way so we can focus on the sky. I'm going to cover quite a bit of this, actually. See how much better that makes that look? So it's important to just understand that don't frustrate yourself. And if you are, go on to the next step. In this case, the horizon. Do something that you know you can do, and that's just clean up that edge and then see how it looks. Because a lot of times, it doesn't look nearly as bad as you think once you, once you move on. stand back real quick and look again. So now at least we can focus on the northern lights a little bit more and I think I might even raise might even raise this edge over here up a little bit. And this isn't the exact color that I'm going to use quite yet. I'll probably have some darker tones in the actual horizon and the foreground. We'll get to that though. For now, I just want that edge to be in place. I want to know where I'm going with it. Okay, so that helps out quite a bit. Let's take some green, add some green in this. This is just going to darken it down some.
Okay, so that gets us a start. And I'm going to take a larger brush, probably go back to the original brush I used, the big one. Let's go ahead. And fill in some more of that foreground. So we got the edge cleaned up nice. Take some water, add some water to it. Just keep it flowing. We've got the edge cleaned up nice. Now I can just kind of drag some of that color a little bit further down. Okay, so that looks much better. I can at least focus on the sky now and forget about the horizon. Got a lot of work to do in this foreground. There's a lot of details I wanna add. This is just a template. So I'm gonna continue with just finishing up a few more stars here. And I believe that I'll be ready to move on to the next step. And that will be in the next video. Well, as always, thank you so much for watching. I really appreciate all your guys' support. Remember, if you had questions about this at any point, please leave them in the comments below if you have suggestions for future videos. I, I get a lot of feedback that you guys don't like how I speed up the videos, and I really am trying to stretch these paintings out over several videos now instead of just one like I used to. So I'm trying to share as much as I can and I will continue to do so. But if you had any suggestions for parts, and I really appreciate those suggestions, if you have any at all for parts that I might have missed in any videos, I will try to cover that in a future video. So just know that I will continue to try and share everything that I can and I appreciate all, appreciate all of your guys' support and questions. And of course, if you'd like to support my channel, please check out my free print giveaway, as well as my eBay auctions and website. All of those links are in the description below. I auction off all the paintings I do here in the videos through my eBay. Again, thank you, and we will see you next time.